So when you when you had this amazing uh, chemistry that occurred with you and him and the release, then you, it's some some artists at that point go. Uh, there's many artists who go, wow, where do you go from here? Where do you continue from here? Or do you just find something that works and stick with it? And again, I guess it comes back to that risk. And, and when you decided to go in the next direction, in the next few recordings, wh- what was your compass? My compass on the second album was to even get softer and simpler, okay, and keep it more down to earth and did for ALA. The opening piece is a big crowd um, for Onipa, uh, that was in 1993, the uh, the 100th year anniversary. So uh, Ayala A, written by Leo Anderson Akana, um, uh, is a great piece of work, mm-hmm. and fit Israel, and he was the first to record it, fit him so well. And um, so I went, I went down a bit, and then we did a live. Um, uh, he was a, a great performer, and a li- he would just tear the house apart when he mm. showed up on a stage you know and so we did a live album and we did uh, a couple of other uh, some dvds some stories and a few things like that and this was this was while he was you know he did feel the success mm-hmm. people often at, tell me it's so it's so it's just so too bad that that he really never felt all the success of the movies and the the world success that he's had and, um, and and stuff like that, and I and I, I tell him no, he did feel it. It, mm-hmm. it was just the beginning of it, but it was definitely uh, the the beginning of the, the whole pop process. His first movie was with Zalman King, which was um, in God's hands, which they used Hawaii seventy eight for. Okay, mm-hmm. and it was an underwater scene. It was it was breathtaking. It was beautiful, and so he felt that he was alive and well and lived through that one. And we were negotiating um, uh, Meet Joe Black, mm-hmm. um, and that was already picked. Martin Bress, the um, uh, director, mm-hmm. already had already picked it and said, I have to have this. I don't care what it takes. I have to have this. This is my song. And Israel knew about it, but he died about three months before the movie was released. How did, the, how did they find that? How did they find him and the music? There's a... Um, I ask the same question because I'm always curious mm-hmm. on how you find this. Where'd you get this? Where'd you buy it? Did you buy it? Did you steal it? Somebody give it to you. What mm-hmm. happens? I'm always asking that question of everybody. Okay, and um, I had the opportunity to um, ask Mr. King, and um, he said that he was in one of the coolest and biggest record stores in L.A. called Amoeba, which is a two-story mezzanine kind of record mm-hmm. store. I, I don't even know if it's there anymore. Mm-hmm. The record business is in ruins right now. Yeah. Not, you know, it's 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 awful to to watch. But th- this store was so intense that it had one of everything. I mean, every every possible, you know. And they handled both CDs, music, records, video, DVDs, everything. And um, K- uh, Zalman King said, I walked in there, and it was easy, because uh, uh, um, Amoeba was one of the first ones to have this new technology of you pick up a CD out of where you find it in the little, you know, mm-hmm. where you're scrolling through it. You take it over to a listening station, mm-hmm. and you swipe the barcode, and mm-hmm. you put headphones on, and you can listen to the album. Mm-hmm. Okay? And they have, like, you know, a hundred stations in this store where you can do that. And then, then you're asked politely just to leave the CD on the counter, and it'll be put back in the proper place by the sales clerks. Okay, so people are just constantly listening, and and the cover was the Facing Future cover with mm-hmm. his back to you and the big drum mm-hmm. Facing the Future, and that was, was way that better. Your, all. Was that your idea? Um, yes, basically, and mm-hmm. I took the photograph, wow. and um, and he was up at Palehua at my studio, and you know I asked him one day, I said. Israel, you know, you shy about your body? He says, no, no, I'm not shy. Mm-hmm. I said, I didn't think so, but I just had to ask you. I said, you want, you want to go out in the yard, take your shirt off, go out in the yard, let me take some photographs. It's a beautiful day. I went out and took 87 photographs wow. that day, and those are the photographs you see the most of. Amazing. Okay. Um, it was, he was about 600 pounds at that point, 640 or so pounds. He got down to about 480 at one point. And um, he died at 1,000 pounds. Oh, my God. I didn't so, know that. I didn't and, know that. you know, someone about a year ago, um, if you've ever, uh, if we've ever met, 
I'm I'm rather small in stature. Mm-hmm. In fact, I'm very small in stature. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm five three, mm-hmm. and um, uh, 110 with 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 $50 worth of quarters in my pocket. Okay, <laughs> and uh, someone asked me, he said, so so, does this mean that you were like one tenth of his body? <laughs> I said. Yeah, I've never thought of it that way, but yeah, you're right. <laughs> amazing, amazing. In fact, we were in the studio once. This is a great little story. We were in the studio once, and um, we were just wrapping it up, and uh, and one of my um, cohorts comes by to um, pick me up or visit me or something, and she's in the um, control booth, and, and the engineer's got his head down on the board pushing things and making some adjustments. And she says, where's John? And he, he leans up and points over to his room and says, he's over there. You know, and he goes back to his knobs and stuff like that. And says, I don't see him. Where is he? Where is he? You know, she couldn't find me. Uh, you know, I, look, I was missing. Actually, I was sitting behind him. <laughs> and he was totally shadowing me, okay? So it, it, took, it took her a minute to go out in the studio and find him. And then, oh, there you are. 